Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for your general collective reading regarding the energies of the full moon in Cancer. So of course, this cannot be everyone's reading. If it's yours, comment below. If not, check my channel for other messages you need to hear. And as always, time, energy, and gender are fluid. So reverse roles, however they apply to your story. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and tap the notification bell so you can catch future readings so of course thank you to my subscribers I love you guys all of you especially those of you checking on me making sure I'm okay um, I'm okay <laughs> um, <laughs> as my eye twitches like y'all this uh, retrograde season has been a doozy Venus retrograde has taken me out it has been such a challenge for me to even turn on this camera so hopefully all of y'all have been doing well and coming back bouncing back from the holiday season um hopefully you haven't missed me too much and for those of you who look for guidance when i am not present on youtube um, definitely feel free to check out other readers there are amazing readers out there uh, one of my most recent favorites being twintuitive 717 of course, I always love my Deborah Claire, my Erica Elmitz, um, and many others. I'm sure I'm not shouting out. I love my Tyler's Tarot and <laughs> love my Milagros and a bunch of others. But um, as you well know, it takes a lot of energy to not only put yourself out there on uh, a public platform the way that I do, but um, it takes a lot of energy to do readings in general. So I hope that you guys have been finding your guidance in um, other places this January as I have been very slow to return to the YouTube community. But um, not really, like I said, for anything in particular. Nothing is wrong. I've just felt uh, very drawn to um, self-care and family time and... Uh, there has been a little bit of an extension of the holiday due to some sicknesses and things like that. But um, as always, we are doing our best to try and stay well, stay healthy. Um, <laughs> I've been getting into yoga with my kids and just enjoying the quiet time spent with my family. So again, if you missed me, I'm sorry. I missed y'all too. Um, and I'm excited to get back into it. So um as always, uh, please feel free to check the description box below if you'd like to connect with me on all social media platforms, which again, haven't really been that active recently, unless you like watching 32 hours of an Instagram story. <laughs> uh, so yeah, y'all, I've just been a little bit of a hermit mode. And um, again, this Venus retrograde has been a little volatile for me. Um, I'm also a Cancer rising, so for those of you who know what that means, your rising sign is your chart roller, which means that my, um, me, I am ruled by the moon. So uh, every few days as the moon switches signs, it's a little bit of, <laughs> it's a little bit of an energy shift for me as well. So I'm constantly going through the 12 zodiological signs as the moon shifts and phases. So you guys, speaking of, we know this full moon is in Cancer. So I guess that's why I've been feeling a little bit more at home since Cancer does roll that general um, theme of home and family. Um, and the moon governs our emotions. So if you are wanting to skip to the tarot reading, of course, check the t uh, timestamp down below in the comments. But this is going to be really quick, guys. Of course, you know the full moons are all about releasing um, and allowing ourselves to let go of things that are no longer serving us, things that we've been holding on to. Um, new moons are all about your manifestation period so since the new moon that we just experienced uh, a few weeks ago y'all haven't even been on here in so long i don't even remember what the new moon was in so forgive me but you can always refer to my channel since that was the last video <laughs> that i recorded um 
new moons are about manifestation, calling things in, uh, and setting our intentions, right? So this full moon in Cancer, I think we're going to be really urged to come back to what makes us feel at home, okay? So if you have been feeling like a homebody, if you have been uh, feeling a little over-emotional, maybe a little moody, uh, again, volatile is the word that I keep thinking of, uh, keep in mind that this is paired up with Venus and Mercury retrograde um, in Capricorn and Aquarius. So if you are feeling these aspects very deeply right now, then it is no surprise considering as Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, the Lord of Karma, Daddy Saturn. We also have uh, Aquarius ruled by Uranus, which is the planet of revolutionary change and rebellion. Even though Uranus is going to be going um, direct as of tomorrow, we still have a very uh, long shadow period considering as Uranus has been retrograde since August. So with these two planets retrograde, Venus and Mercury, I feel as if a lot of us have been and will still be experiencing themes of karmic relationships and uh, partnerships and things that are coming up to be purged. Um, maybe cycles from the past repeating themselves, coming back around to see if we're still dumb enough to tolerate that shit. Um, especially with Mercury being retrograde, you may have been hearing from people from your past. And if you haven't received any actual physical messages, this could just be in the form of dreams or even common themes popping up that remind you of said karmic cycles. So, not to hit y'all with a personal story or anything, but I'm about to because it's very relevant for me over the last few weeks. Um, so y'all, we already know Venus retrograde is not a good time to start anything new, okay? And um, I decided to ignore that and start opening up and sharing my life with someone new who I felt was um, was very synchronistic and showing up in my life and it's just one of those situations like you feel like you connect with someone but on the back end deep down you're kind of um, skeptical or you are already kind of looking out for those red flags and some some of you may say, well, you know, that could also be a self-fulfilling prophecy, but I think deep down it's more of just intuition, knowing that something isn't going to work out in advance, but continuing to try anyway. So anyways, y'all, I ended up um, sharing my life, my energy with someone new who I felt very uh, connected to, who I cared about very deeply. And um, they turned out to just basically show me repeating themes of things that I have already been through in previous romantic scenarios uh, that were just impossible to ignore. It was almost stupid, right? It's almost like when you study for a test and you study for a test and you study for a test over and over and over and you just know the information. Um, and then, you know, you have your friend come over with them flashcards and you're like, all right, quiz me, right? And then they start hitting you with the most basic scenarios that you already know, right? That was how it felt for me. Um, so as I started to get to know this person and open myself up to them, started to realize um, what a horrible mistake that was and how my intuition was basically screaming at me from day one not to allow this person into my energy field. And sure enough, within a matter of weeks, it was already said and done. Um, you know, this person that I connected with really revealed themselves to be just a carbon copy of other um, individuals that I have dated in the past. And, you know, the worst part about it is, you know, I hate when you call someone out on their bullshit and then they want to have the audacity to turn around and act like you're the one who did something wrong. Um which was just another very triggering theme to pop up for me because I've dealt with that a lot in my past and with friends, with, with family, with romantic partners. And, you know, I'm so sick of the fucking gaslighting and, um, and all of the emotional manipulation tactics that it just makes it so much easier to cut someone out of your life, which kind of sounds sad, but, you know, I'm the type of person who... I've been through a lot of pain, I've been through a lot of bullshit, and 
I'm still, I'm still um, open enough and I'm still, <laughs> I'm still vulnerable enough to allow myself to experience new things because I don't want to be, I don't want to be that person who closes themselves off from potential love and potential partnership and and great things because I'm afraid of what happened in my past, right? But also, my past is what has made me stronger and, and capable of realizing these things very quickly and being able to um, being able to go ahead and dump those bad eggs quicker than I was in the past. So if anything, you know, going through all of the shit, you learn, right? You, you become more quick and you um, become less tolerant for people's bullshit. So even though it was hurtful to go through what I did, it was completely necessary for spirit to show me the same lesson again. Because the quickness of which I got through this lesson was um, was saying a lot compared to the amount of time I have wasted in the past on people letting them come back and giving chances after chance after chance and the benefit of the doubt, which can be so dangerous, right? But again, it's these lessons that teach us and help us grow. So this retrograde for me was just a reminder of um, of paying attention to those red flags and not allowing anyone into my energy field that isn't willing to prove themselves to me. And, you know, I hate to say prove yourself, but at the same time, like, fucking prove yourself, okay? You need to work and earn my energy. Like, I'm not some fucking... <laughs> I'm not some fucking doll that you can put up on the shelf when you're not feeling it anymore. Like, I'm a person. So for those of you who are experiencing... So for those of you who are experiencing that type of energy, my heart really goes out to you because it seems like the ones with the biggest hearts and the most to offer are the ones who end up getting taken advantage of in this world. It's really fucking sad. But like I said, you know, for those of you who say like that tears are making you weak or that your emotions are making you weak, those emotions are what you're standing on. And those emotions are what help you express who you really are in this world. So, you know, for those of you who think like, damn, she's really on here fucking crying. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> because it's it sucks. And it's really overwhelming sometimes. And life is really hard. Um... And that's what all these retrogrades are about, right? It's about causing us to look back and uh, and review how we're spending our energy, um, who we're letting in, who we're allowing to, who we're allowing to stand with us and and be a part of our lives. Because you know, I ain't got any fucking room in my life for anyone with ill intent. I don't have any room in my life for anyone who is going to, um, who's going to care one minute and then when it's not convenient, find some fucking reason to blame, <laughs> to blame me or blame you, blame whoever's listening. If you feel like this is resonating with you, I'm so sick and tired of people coming along and, <laughs> and being like a fucking tease. Like, don't even come around me. If you feel like I'm too this or that, or if you feel like I'm just too much, go find less, okay? Go find someone else who you can run your game on, someone who you can fool, someone who you can 
who you can sneak around on, okay? Someone who you can act dumb with, because I'm not that person. And for those of you who understand what I'm talking about, um, I think this full moon could just be a reminder of all of that. Um, all of those emotions coming up to the surface, like I said, needing to be purged. Just a reminder of how strong we are. And even though we're that soft, gushy, marshmallow fluff on the inside, um, that we're strong enough to protect ourselves and we're strong enough to, um, to understand and recognize when someone's for us and when they're not. So for those of you who have had some difficulty in the past, deciphering, differentiating between those energies, my heart goes out to you because, like I said, it's those of us who have the biggest hearts and the strongest energies that everyone is so attracted to, right? Everybody always wants that energy in their life, but once they experience it and they realize that they can't fucking hang, that's when the excuses start coming out, right? That's when all of the bullshit starts flowing. And that's when you need to really start using your discernment, okay? So I hope that whatever you guys have been going through in the last few weeks, I hope that you've been able to truly use your discernment and protect yourselves, protect your energies, um, and be willing to cut people out of your life who have no business being there. Um, so like I said, this energy of cancer is calling us to come back home. Um, to get comfortable in what we know and, and what makes us feel really good, okay? So for those of you who have been really um, dedicated to your fitness um, and starting out the new year with new health regimens and things like that, um, I think I already mentioned, but I, I started a yoga journey with my children. Um, I've been really into uh, eating whole foods and eating only healthy things and uh, only putting things into my body um, for fuel, for energy. So uh, I hope that you all are doing the same. I hope you're finding it not only a time for you to purge your emotions, but time for you to spend with your family um, and get close to the ones that you love. So, and also the ones that are uh, reciprocating the energy that you put out into the universe. So didn't expect to cry um, like that, but we're going to get right into the reading and we're going to see what spirit has to say for the collective. What messages do we need to hear? Um, and again, this is a general message. So take what resonates with you, leave the rest behind and allow this message to flow with you the way that it's meant to. Okay. So what do we have for the full moon in cancer? <laughs> full moon in cancer <laughs> so a personal issue reaches resolution um, and let's see what else we have here be bold and make the first move so I do feel as if um, a lot of you could be feeling that energy of <laughs> of of taking those steps whatever they might be right um, cardinal moon cancer is also a cardinal sign so with this cancer energy popping up I just feel like a lot of us are are in that energy of being overly emotional okay maybe worried or fretting about something that we've been waiting to receive some closure on uh, again a lot of you could be experiencing some phone calls or, or text messages things people popping up out of nowhere to um, get said closure and and maybe this could be spirit telling you now is the time for you to be that person okay maybe you need to reach out and talk to someone from your past fix things um, allow emotions to be purged and whatnot now this could also be the energy of your person if you're watching this for someone else so for those of you who have been waiting on something to be resolved Full moons are about uh, secrets being revealed and information coming to light. So, you know, some of you could be receiving information from a third party. Uh, some of you could be um, just kind of hoping that someone will make the first move. Whatever this is for you, this is a very powerful combination of energy, okay? Cardinals are like the, the leaders, 
okay? So this is a good time for you to lead with your emotions. Be bold. Don't allow yourself to sit in the shadows of your feelings and, um, and cry in the corner, all right? Don't cry out loud is a big song that I always think of when, <laughs> whenever I'm feeling emotional. I don't know if you've ever heard it. It's really old, but um, don't cry out loud. Keep it inside. Uh, learn how to hide your feelings. Like We're always told to keep everything we feel inside or to not be overly emotional, but kind of feel like maybe that's what's been holding us back for some of us, okay? So I think Spirit's really asking you to just let it flow, let it go, um, allow these things to be resolved, um, but understand that you play a major role in these things being resolved, whatever they are. So again, for some of you, you could be advised to reach out to someone from your past, okay, or someone in general to express your emotions, um, to resolve something, but again, this could be someone coming back around, deciding that they're going to make a move, deciding that they're going to come around and finally release their own emotions. Okay, so whatever it is for you, um, y'all, <laughs> whatever it is for you, and then I look at the bottom of the deck and you and your loved ones are safe, new moon and cancer. And this is the card that I was talking about, um, that I mentioned, that I was thinking of. And this is it, okay? Regardless of the retrogrades, whatever personal situation you've been going through, you are divinely protected. You are being guided by your angels, your guardians, the universe, God, okay? The new moon and cancer energy popping up is also kind of a foreshadowing for me over the next couple of weeks. As the moon is in a waning phase, okay, as we approach the next new moon, um, the next couple of weeks could be a time of purging and letting it all out for you. Um, so this could also be spirit saying in order to prepare yourself for the next new moon, you need to understand that whatever it is that has to happen in the next couple of weeks is all a part of your spiritual growth. It's all preparing you for that next cycle of what you're going to be calling in. Okay. So a very interesting, um, very interesting, so I'm going to put this card here because I thought it was kind of crazy that it came up. So we're going to see what the Crystal Visions Tarot has to say in regards to the recent past, present, future energy. Um, so what does the, collectively, um, the collective need to know regarding the recent past? Okay, so the recent past, we have the Ten of Wands and the Eight of Cups. So... Whoever this is, someone has decided that the burdens and the bullshit that they've been holding on to is no longer worth their energy. It's no longer worth their time. Someone is walking away from anything that's not fulfilling. Uh, this could be the ending of a relationship, okay? This could be someone finally saying, you know what, I've dealt with this long enough. I'm done with this. I'm not going to um, be worried about everyone else's drama, everyone else's things that need to be accomplished. This is someone who has carried the weight on their shoulders for a really long time. And the Ten of Pentacles, or excuse me, wow, I said Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Wands is the ending of a karmic cycle, okay? Uh, Eight of Cups is walking away from something from a relationship, from a connection that was emotionally unfulfilling. This is someone who is hopeful in finding true spiritual union, okay? So for those of you who have felt like the last couple of months have been very challenging, uh, if you have felt like everything you're doing, all of the hard work you're putting into the physical is for the benefit of others, this is no more. Okay, whoever this is has decided it's not worth their energy, it's not worth the love and the passion and the emotion that they put into it anymore, and the energy that they're putting out there is not being matched, okay? Instead of experiencing love and authenticity, they're experiencing just, you know, individuals, energies piling everything on top of them um, and expecting them to just kind of deal with it, handle it. So whoever it is out there that is feeling this way, 
this could be that personal issue reaching resolution, right? Someone finally having the courage, having the guts to end a cycle that they had no business being in to begin with, okay? So let's talk about the uh, present energy. What does Spirit want us to know about what's currently going on here under this full moon in Cancer? So landing right on top of the Eight of Cups, we have the Seven of Wands. So we have this, this individual now no longer looking tired and dejected on the back of a horse, but rising up now in warrior's pose on a powerful dragon. This is someone who is basically saying, I ain't gonna take no shit no more. Okay, I'm not going to allow y'all to keep coming at me with your energy and making me feel like I need to defend myself. Um, this is someone who is standing up for what's right, who is fighting the good fight. Okay, as you can see, they're like preparing to battle all of these wands up against them. And they're like, I don't care. I'm fighting for what I believe in. I'm fighting for what I know I deserve. Okay. We also have the Six of Cups. So this could be in regards to a relationship or a connection from the past. Six of Cups is a strong soul tie. Okay, This could also be having memories from your childhood. This could also be having dreams that remind you of the past. Whatever this is personally for you, the Six of Cups is about a past life connection. So you might be feeling very nostalgic or thinking about the past. Again, dealing with or experiencing energy from someone from the past, or this could be you hoping to reconnect with someone from the past. So regardless of who this is or what this is about, um, someone's fighting, okay? Someone is fighting to perhaps resurrect what they felt for someone before. Or again, this could be someone coming back around from the past that there was no closure with, and this person could be finally like standing up for themselves and deciding that this is not a connection that they're wanting to let go of, okay? So with the Hierophant here, this involves spiritual beliefs and, um, and marriage, okay, commitment. Um, this is also a divine masculine energy. So whoever this is, um, I do feel as if they are very committed. I feel as if they have been also expanding their spiritual beliefs and understanding more of the, um, of the world. As far as tradition is concerned, you could be dealing with someone who is very traditional, someone who believes in um, like the traditional sense of marriage. This could be someone who really wants to commit, someone who wants to take things to the next level. Uh, this could also involve someone who is or was married already. So let's elaborate on that. Let's get some more energy for what's happening at present to clarify for the Hierophant. It's funny, I said the Ten of Pentacles earlier, and now we have it popping up in the reverse with the Knight of Swords in the reverse. So what I feel like is going on here is uh, someone was in a long-term connection and no longer is. Okay, there's uh, maybe a lot of money at stake here. Uh, this could be someone who lost a lot of money. But when I see the Knight of Swords in the reverse, this is someone who like refuses to be honest, right? Someone who is not coming forward and speaking their truth. So this person, whoever they are, could have potentially ended a long-term connection because they felt as if they couldn't be themselves. They couldn't be authentic. They couldn't speak freely, okay? So Knight of Swords in the reverse can also be a very aggressive uh, energy, someone who maybe ended things very harshly with someone else. And I kind of feel like <laughs> when I think of the Knight of Swords, I, I just, all I can hear is like, fuck it. Like, it's that fuck it energy. You don't care what you say or how you say it. All you know is you need to get your truth out. You don't care if it hurts anyone. You don't care if it's blunt, if it's rude. And that is that Aquarian energy popping through. Okay, so with Mercury in retrograde, this could be exactly the thing that caused said ending. Okay, so for whoever this is, ending a long-term connection, again, maybe um, dealing with the loss of finances, <clears throat> could also be a card of like dividing up assets, 
But overall, it's a card of speaking your truth regardless of the consequences. It's an energy of rushing forward and not really thinking, okay? So someone spoke their truth unapologetically and cut something off. They're fighting for what they believe in now because I feel as if there's a connection from the past that needs to be addressed, okay? So let's also clarify the Six of Cups. Yeah, wow, you guys. So the Six of Cups being clarified by the Two of Cups basically ties together everything I said about this Eight of Cups energy over here. Someone was tired of putting in work into a connection that felt like nothing but a burden, and now all they want to do is unite with the person who they feel like is their Two of Cups, their their person, right? This is spiritual connection. It's mutual respect. It's mutual feelings. Someone who is on the same page emotionally, okay? Um, so very interesting. I really love this energy coming out. This could be exactly what y'all are wanting to manifest coming up here at the next new moon, manifesting a true partnership, someone who really gets you, who's there for you, who has your back, and who isn't going to allow any sort of energy or individuals into the connection that would uh, potentially hold them back or do them harm, right? So everything that wasn't working out before is starting to materialize in the present as a new opportunity, okay? So for some of you, you've been waiting for this person to come back around. And, you know, Venus retrograde is, is not good for those starting new connections, but it's perfect for those who are coming back around, okay? Someone coming back from the past, maybe that you didn't have closure with, not all people coming back from the past are karmic lessons, okay? So again, this is a really great time to use your discernment. If it doesn't feel like the Two of Cups, you will certainly know it, okay? And I think that's a big reason why some of you might be feeling this nostalgia around this full moon because, again, you're wanting what feels like home. You're wanting to be comforted. Um, and what's more comforting than being with someone who is 100% on your level, okay? This could be a twin flame soul connection um, that you're trying to manifest back into your life. And again, this could be an external uh, look into someone coming back in to manifest that connection with you, okay? So again, keep in mind um, whichever version of the story fits with you, don't force the other parts to fit, okay? So if you're sitting there thinking, Chris, please don't talk to me about somebody coming back from my past, then you might want to click off this reading because that's kind of what this feels like, okay? So let's talk about what's to come. What do we have uh, coming in here? Ooh, wow. So we've got the strength card popping up. Anything else coming in for this connection? And the knight of wands in the reverse, okay? So I think spirit is, is just telling you what I just said. Okay, use your discernment. Obviously, we want to hold fast to our convictions, be strong, be confident, and be courageous in our actions moving forward. But that also includes cutting off anyone who comes towards you in that energy of a player, okay? Typically, the Knight of Wands is a very passionate um, person who, who takes action, right? This could also be sexual and sensual energy. But showing up in the reverse could be someone who is afraid of commitment, someone who's only interested in sex, someone who um, just basically is riding on in just to ride on out. Uh, so again, use your discernment for what's to come because there, there may be individuals approaching you passionately throughout this retrograde, but not everyone is going to be this, okay? Not everyone is going to be the Two of Cups. So for some of you, you might be fighting off some players, some energies of people who are just feeling some type of way and want to rekindle a romance with you, uh, but not necessarily willing to think about the future. Um, so again, be strong. Uh, recognize where these individuals are coming in and uh, observe their energy and be honest with yourself about what you're willing to allow to continue 
in your environment. So let's get some more clarity on what's coming. <clears throat> so you have the Page of Pentacles and the Judgment card in the reverse. So Spirit's telling you to take it slow and decide to invest, not only invest in yourself, but if you're going to invest in someone else, make sure that you're doing so cautiously, okay? Because the last thing you want to do is make a wrong judgment call um, and and have spirit toot that trumpet up your behind and force you to relive a lesson that you've already gone through, okay? So remember, use your discernment. Know that your angels and your guides are helping you, are guiding you through whatever's to come. And whatever you decide to invest your coin in, whatever you decide to invest your time, your energy in, make sure that you are being cautious. Make sure that you're taking your time um, and understand that the energy you put into the physical is going to be long lasting. Okay, so you don't want to put any more energy into the physical in regards to old karmic cycles that need to have been wrapped up already. All right, so for some of you, you could be having spirit, okay, coming back in with the old lesson. <laughs> like I said, to see if you're still dumb enough to accept half-ass offers to see if you are still um, willing to entertain individuals who are not willing to actually invest in you in return. So I think Spirit's telling you, whatever you invest in, make sure that it's an equal opportunity, okay? It's not you just out here um, hosting some charity event, okay? This is your energy we're talking about. This is your time, your love, um, and it should not be poured into just any old vessel, okay? Make sure that the energy you're putting into a connection is that two of cups, equal give and take, mutual respect and understanding, someone who is matching your energy, okay? Otherwise, we're going to get that two to do up the butt, all right? We don't want that. We want spirit to, um, to be proud, right? They want us to learn these lessons so we can move on to the next level. Okay, don't spend your time hanging out in an old level just because you feel like it might be easier. Uh, sometimes it takes a great amount of strength and courage to move forward and take action on our future. Um, and you know what, like I said, that could be what's happening as well. If this is someone coming back from your past, this person might come back with a lot of energy, okay? So use your discernment and uh, stay safe out there, you guys. So bottom of the deck, we have the magician in the reverse. So a lot of you have been through the manipulation tactics we talked about earlier. A lot of you have dealt with the old smoke and mirrors and the... Uh, and the the story of how great things could be or the enticing energy of someone trying to convince you to give them your time, your energy. But deep down, I think that all of these sort of individuals have already been revealed uh, in your life, okay? I think that you're already aware of you're already aware of someone who is truly manifesting you versus someone who is just trying to manipulate you to get what they want, okay? Um, so again, discernment is key, especially under a full moon, which can be very emotional. So let's dig into the psychic tarot and talk about maybe some challenges that could be coming up for you under this aspect. And I say for you, but this could also be about your person, like I said. So we have the Temperance card. Oh, my favorite card ever, y'all. Smack, smack. Temperance coming in to remind you that a seed does not grow overnight, okay? Patience is a virtue. Some of you could be struggling with um, wanting to know what comes next, wanting to get to the next step. Maybe wanting to skip through the karmic lessons, um, hibernate until <laughs> retrograde is over. But Spirit's reminding you that patience is required here, okay? Maybe you have been very patient and it's been a struggle. Um, but overall, if that's been your struggle and your challenge, then again, it's been your biggest lesson that you've needed to learn, okay? So let's see what else we need to know regarding any challenges or blockages coming up under the full moon. 
and we have the hermit card here okay so solitude and we've got this big book open sitting by a pillar in front of the mountains uh, i think spirit's also saying that it could be a challenge for you to be alone okay maybe some of you just hate being alone um uh, some of you may have uh, bounced from relationship to relationship in the past for fear of being alone. And uh, for some of you, you've stayed in relationships that were toxic because you were afraid to be alone. But Spirit is telling you that this challenge of being alone, uh, it might feel like walking over mountains and, and trekking through the woods and and just doing a bunch of shit that you don't feel like doing, but this is the lesson. Okay, the lesson is to go within and understand that you don't need external validation. Okay, you don't need anything external from what's within you. You have all of the answers. You already know what's to come. Okay, so this is a card about trusting the knowledge and the wisdom within um, and allowing yourself to get over said challenges by being in solitude. So let's get one more card here see what else we have to um <clears throat> okay i said one more card and we had a whole bunch fall out so we have hope okay the star card <clears throat> so it could be a challenge for you to have hope in something that you've been wishing for uh, maybe you feel like the wish that you've had in your heart all along has evaded you especially if it has to do with love um if it has to do with this two of cups energy <clears throat> So it could be a challenge to kind of hold on to that, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Especially if it's something we need to be patient for, if we've been patient for a long time, if you feel like you've already been in this hermit mode for a long time and nothing's happening, I think Spirit is telling you to continue to have hope, okay? Um, with financial and material changes and transformation popping up here as well, literally the death card next to the five of pentacles so for some of you like i said this bounce back from the holidays has not been easy this could also be signifying um, again if you or your person is dealing with any sort of financial hardship okay any uh lack uh that you might be dealing with this could also be processing what it feels like to be left out in the cold to be forgotten okay if you feel like someone left you behind this could be how you might be feeling um causing you to um to go through a major transformation okay this is the death energy so remember you know death is not uh the end it's only the beginning Okay, so this is a chance to rise from the ashes as the phoenix. So if we're talking about someone else, what I'm seeing here is I think the challenge for this person all along and maybe why it's taken them so long is because they have been dealing with some financial issues. Like I said, the ten of pentacles in the reverse could be that division of assets. The five is literally half of the ten. So you could be looking at someone who is going through a major transformation right now, um, going through some endings and having to deal with bouncing back from financial struggle okay so whatever this is for you let's see what spirits advice is on how to overcome <clears throat> all of a sudden my throat is starting to crack a lack oh so we have trust we have trust discernment <laughs> and will so when I see the card will, I always think where there's a will, there's a way, right? And uh, some of us may be hiding behind a mask metaphorically, but um, have so much power behind that mask. So thinking about the strength card here, Spirit's telling you that maybe there might not seem like a way, but there always is a way, okay? Sorry, I had to clear my throat a little bit there. Um, there's always a way, right? There's always a way. And you can see the moon shifting and going through its cycles. Um, and again, the number 13 popping up, which is the death card energy. So I think spirit's telling you, like, if you feel like you need to hide right now, it's okay, right? It's okay to hide right now. But at the end of the day, the courage, the strength, the energy that you have within you is always going to be enough 
Okay, so whenever you decide to come out again, whenever you decide to take off that mask, um, Spirit's reminding you that you've always had the strength and the power within you to manifest, to make whatever this is, whatever said dream you have come true. Whatever personal issue that needs resolution, you have the power within you to resolve, okay? Um, so with trust and discernment coming out here, ooh, and wisdom, did not see this one. Trust, wisdom, discernment. Spirit is telling you like they are, they've got your back, okay? They're telling you to trust in the divine. Temperance is also a card of divine intervention and divine timing, okay? So use your discernment at this time. Don't allow your emotions to cloud your vision, okay? Feel your feelings, let it out, purge all of that energy. But remember, after your tears have been cried, okay? After your tears have been crowed, after they're done, you have so much power still residing within you, okay? So Spirit's telling you to trust in that wisdom, trust in that energy that you have been accumulating in your solitude and know that everything you've learned and everything you've gone through on your journey, every lesson, every setback, everything has been building up to this point, okay? Building up to this point of welcoming in true spiritual union, Okay, welcoming in true connection. So again, use your discernment during these retrogrades because you never know what's going to come your way. Okay, and you never know how it's going to be dressed. Okay, so uh, keep all that in mind. And um, of course, as always, I love you guys so much. I appreciate those of you again who've checked up on me um, and who are here still watching the video. Um, I hope that this message finds you well, and I hope that you are doing well. Uh, for those of you who are experiencing snow right now, enjoy it. Um, obviously, happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day to those of you who celebrate. Um, and of course, um, brace yourselves, right? Brace yourselves for the rest of January because these retrogrades, like I said, did not come to play. So uh, only the strong will survive, right? <laughs> Uh, keep that in mind uh, when you're thinking about your um, your need to be patient for what's to come, okay? Stay strong. Um, stay well. Don't forget to self-care. Love yourselves. Be compassionate with yourselves. Um, and use this time to relax, rest, rejuvenate, um, and come back to a, a place of, of healed mentality, okay? Allow those tears to cleanse you and to wash away anything that you've been holding on to that has felt heavy. Um, <clears throat> and again, if, if that means uh, um, finding yourself in a blanket burrito on the couch and just enjoying your favorite TV show, for me, I will be binge watching Friends once again, probably for the 15th time in my life, just for comfort. Um, so yeah, whatever it is, like I said, comment below. Um, if you just want to chat, email me. I'm trying to get back into uh, checking my emails and responding. I do still have a few private readings to get caught up on. So if that is you and you're waiting on me, um, I have not forgotten you. And uh, I will be getting back into it this week. I hope to put out some Zodiac videos over the next week or so. Um, and other than that, you guys, I love you and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.